it's a meat eater podcast Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your host, Spencer Newarth, and today we're joined by Brody Henderson, Giannis Putellis, Ryan Callahan, Randall Williams, Chester Floyd, Christine Sawicki, Corey Calkins, and Alyssa Smith. This is a 10-round quiz show with questions from Meat Eater's four verticals, which are hunting, fishing, conservation, and cooking. And there is a prize. Meat Eater will donate $500 to the conservation organization of the winner's choosing. For the stat of the week this week, we're updating our total win counter, which we haven't revisited in months. Brody has a demanding lead with 27 career wins. Demanding? That's f- demanding. That's followed by Steve Commanding. with 19. Hey, it could That's be both. Gap. It could be demanding okay. and commanding. I'm not going to. Oh, sure. Gonna... That's followed by Steve Rennell with 19, Giannis Putellis with 12, Randall Williams with 8, Ryan Callahan with 5, and Clay mm-hmm. Newcomb with 4. The other 18 wins come from other crew members, crew members, family members, and meat eater guests. Does that 8 of Randall's include an asterisk? Uh, no, it includes the last uh, episode, though. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. And we had some controversy on the last there. episode where the players in the room had to vote on if Randall would get it right. Here was the cool thing about the live tour, Randall. If we had any controversy, which uh, Steve would manage to create every now and then, <laughs> mm-hmm. we could just throw it out to the thousand people in the audience. Oh, I like that. And be like, what, what do you guys think? Does Steve get this right? Listen to the voice of the people. And then they would <clears> boo. <throat> They would really <laughs> give him and a hearty boost. Let me boost. tell you, your little eight would not have flown in most, maybe in Davenport, <laughs> Iowa, but the other seven Cleveland, stops. He's, he's from Ohio, the Cleveland well, crowd. I don't think the players you, should decide. I think Phil should. I, I just would like oh, to point thanks, out that the, 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 the rest of the people in the room unanimously consented to uh, <laughs> awarding me that point. Mm-hmm. But Brody's rethinking it. And here yep. we are today. Regretting you know what was funny about live tour trivia is the... Uh, Folks that you know well, everybody knows well, they all still put their names on top of the board, Mm -hmm. which I was wondering if that's just kind of how they get focused. Like Giannis mm. is over there, really. Well, I I prefer it, Cal. <laughs> really making sure nobody's confused. I prefer you write your name on your board, Cal. That way I can just look at the whiteboards when I go around the room. Giannis uh, is making a very strong uh-huh. statement this game. Bold. That just <laughs> bold. <laughs> that just benefits me. Now, traditionally at this point in the show, we do a zero percenter question, but it's a new year here on trivia, so we are going to replace this segment with something else. Oh my! Here's God. what we're going to do. Mm. If you have a question for the crew in regards to trivia, like maybe you want to know Phil's pre-show routine, or maybe you want to know how Brody got so darn good at trivia, or maybe you want to know if Cal even likes being here. Whatever your curiosity (laughs) is, send an email to trivia. Send an email to (laughs) trivia at themeateater.com with the subject line FAQ, and we will start answering some of those questions at the top of the show. That's trivia at themeateater.com with the subject line FAQ. We will start that new segment next week. Now we have some housekeeping to get to. Since the inception of trivia, I've referred to the information I read after each question as the follow-up factoid. But at the Detroit stop on the Meat Eater Live Tour, Billy Hoffman told me that this has a real name and it's not the follow-up factoid. According to Billy, and I've confirmed this with some Googling, the trivia community refers to that as flavor text. TVTropes.com says that flavor text is a vital part of video games, board games, and of course, trivia. They define flavor text as being, quote, any text in a game that is completely unrelated to the actual rules or gameplay and is included merely for effect. So going forward, we'll be referring to those snippets as flavor text. I'm, I'm why sorry. Do, I, I don't like it. Yeah. You why do you like want it? to be like everyone else? Quick I want, veto. <laughs> quick veto. Oh, I like the yeah. alliteration Move of all of factoid. Is this right now flavor text? <laughs> Are we flavor texting? <laughs> We're, well, not yet. Okay. I like flavor text. It's like, uh, it's kind of like flavor eatery. town. You know? There you go. Mm. <laughs> <Got Fieri. laughs> I I did, what did you say, Chester? Kind of like Flavor Town. He's got Fieri on the brain. Yeah. Also, Phil, it's the not... kingdom of Guy Fieri. <laughs> <laughs> the factoid thing has been flawed from the beginning because I think yeah. someone told me factoid means that it's like only a, not really a fact. It's just like sort of a belief or something. Yeah, that lines up. Kind of like a lot of the answers just to these like questions. That. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should do a branded thing like Spencer Shares or something like that. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not Flavor Text. Uh, maybe we'll like have an update for you. What kind of conditioner are you using your beard? No conditioner. <gasps> That's right. Dare you say. Now, the <laughs> Shelby Index for today's round is a five, so I'm putting us on perfect Whoa. score alert. With that, we're on to the game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. Look, 
I need to know what I stand to win. Everything. How's that? I'm a Just head and shoulders guy, you know. Anything that says like two and one, a little sucker for it. Get it all done with one shot. Discount it. Yep. Game yeah. on, suckers! Yep. Not a, not a high dollar brown. See, I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3, Spencer, and there's a <laughs> lot of flavor text in that game. And it's okay. sort of like when you're going through a dungeon and you find just like a vase, and you'll uh-huh. and you put your little cursor over it, and it'll say something like, this vase looks cracked and worn and is covered in a layer of dust. And like, I feel like your your factoids are more than that. It's okay. more than just like a description right. of something. Okay. It's, and and you're adding game, to it. We'll work right? on you're it. You're like, can I smash somebody with this vase? Correct. Yeah. This like, vase that's... looks cracked and worn. Wow. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an incredible name. You know what we need to have a name for is whatever Cal <laughs> oh uh, adds to the drop that Phil plays because it does, doesn't matter. We what can make a montage of Cal talking <laughs> over the drop and it would be a couple minutes long. Yeah, it'd be yeah, a whole episode sure. of uh, whatever Cal has to add. He can't go. Am that- I the only person who's heard the drop before? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it's no longer interesting. It gets me psyched up, man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> question one, the topic is conservation, and this first great question comes to us via Tim Brown. Which of these agencies manages the most acres of land? Is it the Bureau of Reclamation, National Park Service, U.S. Forest Service, or Army Corps of Engineers? Which of these agencies manages the most acres of land? The Bureau of Reclamation, National Park Service, U.S. Forest Service, or Army Corps of Engineers? Randall with a quick answer. Yanni with a quick answer. How do you boys feel about your answer? I feel pretty good. And, you know, the great thing is if I get it wrong, I'll learn something today. <laughs> okay. So. You'll learn it in the flavor text. Mm-hmm. Yanni, you think you got this right? Going with the gut. Which manages the most acres of land? Bureau of Reclamation, National Park Service, U.S. Forest Service, Army Corps of Engineers, does everybody have an answer? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Cal saying U.S. Forest Service. Cal, or excuse me, Randall saying U.S. Forest Service. Cal saying U.S. Forest Service. Chester saying Forest Service. Corey saying Forest Service. Christine saying Forest Service. Alyssa saying Army Corps of Engineers. Brody saying Forest Service. Yanni saying Forest Service. They got it. The correct answer is the U.S. Forest Service. The Bureau of Reclamation manages 6.5 million acres, which is about the size of Massachusetts. The Army Corps manages 24 million acres, which is about the size of Indiana. The National Park Service manages 85 million acres, which is about the size of New Mexico. And the U.S. Forest Service manages 193 million acres, which is about the size of Texas. Question two. The topic is cooking. This spice comes in varieties such as sweet, hot, smoked, Hungarian, and Spanish. Topic is cooking. This spice comes in varieties such as sweet, hot, smoked, Hungarian, and Spanish. Brody is very confident. Brody, you got this one right. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. Oh, there's a hint if anyone knows Brody's <clears throat> kitchen preferences. Put it in everything. Mm, I really? do too. I feel like you can put a bunch of it in and you're like, eh, couldn't tell. Yeah, give him some hints, hints here. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're just buying bad quality stuff. Mm, Cal Randall, do you boys agree? I feel like there's a big difference between smoked and sweet. That's true. Randall? The smoked. The smoked has like a smoky flavor. Mm. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like triple the price, it seems like. Does everybody have an answer? Mm-mm-mm. You know it, Alyssa. This spice comes in varieties such as sweet, hot, smoked, Hungarian, and Spanish. Alyssa, I think we're waiting on you. Take your time. <laughs> Yanni's the only one who ever gets impatient with these things. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Randall saying paprika, Cal saying paprika, Chester saying I think paprika, he's doing this deliberately. Corey saying <laughs> yeah. paprika, Christine saying paprika, 
Alyssa, Brody, Yanni saying paprika. They got it. The correct answer is paprika. That was a 100%. Now, this is going to be some flavor text. (laughs) (laughs) Good one, Randall. (laughs) (laughs) Paprika is created by grinding different types of dried chili peppers and sweet peppers. McCormick describes its flavor as, quote, the sweeter, gentler cousin of the hot chili pepper family. The spice is heavily utilized in Hungarian, Spanish, and other Central European recipes sweeter gentler bland i think, Man, I think you're just pap- round yeah. i think fan. you're long catching strays over here well it's like mm-hmm. a lot of these hot peppers you just pick early when they're super watered down and they're not not spicy also a great uh, garnish yanni that uh, that pretty red i'll give it that Question three, the topic is woodsmanship. This is our listener question of the week, which was won by Jameson Teague for sending this great question. Jameson is going to get a board game signed by the crew. If you want a chance to win our listener question of the week, then send your question to trivia at themeateater.com. Sunflowers and milkweed are this type of plant, which also happens to be a business magazine with the same name, but different spelling. The topic is woodsmanship. Brody has an answer. No one else does. Sunflowers and milkweed are this type of plant, which also happens to be a business magazine with the same name, but different spelling. Brody is still the only person Mm. who has an answer. Brody, you got this right with certainty. You know, you know you got it? If I don't, it's an extremely big coincidence. Okay. I had, uh, to, I had to come up with a very creative spelling of Business Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Bloomberg? It's my favorite plant. <laughs> <laughs> Yanni, you got this one? I think so. Now, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Is spelling important? Spelling here? is not important. Mm, this, could... this one's going to... You could spell it like a biologist would, or you can spell it like uh, the like magazine, the magazine? Does. Mm. Sunflowers and milkweed are this Seems type odd, of plant, but... which also <laughs> happens to be a business magazine <laughs> with the same name, but different spelling. Is everybody ready? Same nope. sounding name. Oh, shit. Yeah. Cal, how many magazines are you subscribed to? Not that one. Not that one, no. <laughs> No, I get the I gift the Montana Outdoors magazine to my nephew every mm. year. Is that from the FWP? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Does everybody have an answer? Shit. Just no. got their annual photo issue in the mail yesterday. It's Which are one. awesome. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Cal, I think we're waiting on you. There you go. Open that marker right in the mic for us. <laughs> So sticky. I, f- I have then, a feeling this is going to be hold one your of ear all upside like, down. Ah, yeah, you're all going to know it when he says it. You could, know it? Could, could, could. I think so. <laughs> what? That's not. Hey, we gave you eight, eight on the last one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's because I got the right. I got the right answer. That's not the same as just throwing out clues and clues <laughs> and trying to stir he, he new thoughts and ideas. Right Cal, time. we're waiting on you. <laughs> I got distracted by the overly defensive tone of the guy with the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> I just I think we've been we've been dancing around our our uh, banter today. We've been dancing too close mm. to that line. <laughs> okay, of acceptable. I, I don't know. This would be yeah. a quiet Steve's, game. Steve's not here. Quiet game going forward. <laughs> Is everybody ready? The Go ahead and the... reveal your answer. We have Randall saying Forbes. Cal without oh an answer. Oh my God. Chester saying <laughs> legume. <laughs> <Lost my> mind. <laughs> Corey. <laughs> legume. <laughs> Corey and Christine and Alyssa and Brody and Giannis saying Forbes. They got it. The correct answer is Forbes. A French business magazine, Legume. (laughs) (laughs) Now, if you want to spell like the magazine, it would be F-O-R-B-E-S. If you were going to spell it like Yanni's wife, who is a botanist, it would be F-O-R-B-S. The definition of a forb is a broad-leaved flowering plant other than grass. Most wildflowers are categorized as forbs. The business magazine has nothing to do with plants. It's actually named after its founder, Bertie Charles Forbes. Question four, the topic is public lands. What state is home to places such as Ozark, St. Francis National Forest, Bull Shoals, White River State Park, and Hot Springs National Park? 
I feel like we've had a very similar question to this before. We have not had this question. <laughs> what state is home to places such as Ozark St. Francis National Forest, Bull Shoals White River State Park, and Hot Springs National Park? Son of a gun. Brody thinks we've had this question before, but he doesn't know the answer. Well... Randall has it right. My Chester, do you have this one right? It is really lack. Uh, I don't know. I'm feeling good about it. This is question four. All right, whatever. <laughs> Alyssa, I think we're waiting on you. Every time, sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> Got that such as in there, Spencer? Looking we good. did such as. Yeah. That's right. Oh, turn it Phil, over. What, a is, new leaf. what are the kids getting for Christmas this year? Oh man, I did. We, we already <laughs> talked about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right before you walked in, Randall asked me the same thing, and I said it was it was a hard year. We had these transitional ages where it's just kind of like they're between mm. interests and so just lots of kitties. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So many. I said get them cats. brand new iPhones. Oh, like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah. No parental. So what's the answer? What are they What are they getting for Christmas? Uh, well, they're well. This is, uh, th- this is definitely for the kids and not for me. We got a really okay. nice karaoke machine. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Is it wrapped Phil? yet? Uh, it's not. No, actually, y- yes. Party. You should bring that it is. Party boy in. Phil. There is. There yeah. has never been a karaoke night at Meat Eater that wasn't instigated by Phil. That's uh, right. Just a coincidence that his kids also like karaoke. Yeah. And it's a, it's a we great are we're one step closer to having the uh, tiki bar karaoke party <laughs> of our dreams. Dude, Cal, uh-huh. don't tempt me. How big is how big is the library on this uh, karaoke machine? It, it says that you get a subscription to like an. It's an enormous library, like okay. hundreds of thousands of songs. Okay. Oh, that's so we'll see. fantastic. Good for you, Phil. Well, you and can and for your family. family. YouTube but, these good days. for you. Thanks. Oh. Phil, you ever need a babysitter? I'm your guy. <laughs> 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 okay, does everybody have an answer for the state that's home to Ozark, St. Francis National Forest, Bull Shoals, White River State Park, and Hot Springs National Park? Between Go them. ahead and reveal your answers. We have Randall saying Arkansas, Ooh, Cal... Really? saying Arkansas, Chester saying Arkansas, Cordy saying Missouri, Christine saying Missouri, she crossed out Arkansas, Alyssa saying Arkansas, Brody saying Arkansas, Yanni saying Arkansas, he crossed out Missouri. The correct answer is Arkansas. Well done, room. Most of you got that right. Hot Springs National Park, which has been nicknamed the American Spa, is the only national park in Arkansas. The thermal springs there have been used by humans for thousands of years, but didn't become a national park until 1916. Question five. The topic is hunting. This next great question comes to us via Josh Ringsmooth. EHD stands for blank hemorrhagic disease. EHD stands for blank hemorrhagic disease. Randall knows this. Brody is thinking hard. Are you seeing my answers as I write them down? Or no, just, I just you're see just your going confidence. Off my demeanor. I see your confidence. Mm. Am, I, like, am I wrong? Am I, I don't wrong? know. I, I get tremendously excited when you say that I know this, <laughs> and then I wonder. I start second guessing myself. Uh-huh. It's that Bugle magazine joke all over again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. EHD stands for. Did it come too easy? Playing with my magic <laughs> disease. Playing with my emotions. Yanni, do you have this one right? I'm pretty sure. Have you ever uh, found a critter that had EHD? I don't believe so, but I've definitely uh, hunted quite a few places that have okay. uh, had play, you know, epis- <laughs> have had things. <laughs> Does everybody have an answer? <laughs> I'm second guessing myself. Spencer only said a long time ago in my youth, hard, I was anyway. hunting a bachelor group of eight <laughs> mule deer bucks, mm-hmm. and I uh, found them all dead by the end of the week. Really? What? Yep. Every single did one. They, bucks. Did they Every die at, uh, at Did water? you ever get your scope zeroed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is archery. It was archery. Uh, first week archery season. Yeah. We found that's a bunch of makes it ones. weirder that you had a rifle with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's for self-protection. Nobody can tell me I can't pack a rifle around. Does everybody have an answer, Corey? <sighs> yeah. How'd you spell it? Alyssa? I can't tell if I'm happy with my answer or not. Is everybody ready? 
Go ahead and reveal your answers. If you were listening closely, Yanni gave away a little bit of the answer. <laughs> mm. Randall saying epidemic. Cal saying <laughs> epizootic. Bro, or excuse mm. me, uh, Chester without an answer. Corey saying external. Christine saying erratic. Alyssa saying eastern. Brody saying epizootic. Giannis saying epis. What's that say? Episodic. 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 The correct answer <laughs> is epizootic. Yeah, I don't get oh, it. I don't. Okay, uh, Brody is the only one who got. Oh, uh, no, uh, and Cal got Cal, it. Cal got it right. And two O's. Okay, on it's hard to read when your board's upside down every oh, other time. Son of a bitch. Sorry, yeah. It's literally every time. <laughs> epizootic hemorrhagic disease is a viral disease in deer that's transmitted by biting midges. It's often fatal and is most prevalent in years with extreme drought. For more on this mm. disease, listen to episode 58 of the Wired to Hunt podcast. What's the nickname? You got it in your flavor text. You got to well, give I, them the nickname. But I think that's blue tongue, blue tongue is incorrect. Be, that's not the same thing as EHD. Oh, it's not. Pe people use them interchangeably, mm. and it's like not a big deal. It's not worthy of correcting somebody because you have the same ingredients that cause well, them that both. Well, that should be usually. your flavor text, like correcting people that it's not. There mm. we go. Like me. That, uh, yeah. Blue, if, if you somebody called the blue tongue, uh, it's not like worthy of telling them that they're wrong. Plus, it's not. It's something... like you're too dumb to even correct, or what? Like, no, what? it's 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 just uh, <laughs> Phil. Phil, we are halfway through the it's game not of a trivia. Disease that like deer spread to each other, and it's typically uh, high, highly localized. The so, EHD, yeah, no, EHD yeah, yeah, and yeah, blue tongue. Yeah. yeah, it's from biting midges. So there's no when they're concentrated at water sources. It wouldn't right? be like a biologist would be like, "Oh my god, I got to go check that out," because it's blue tongue instead of. EHD or Phil, vice versa. Halfway through the game of trivia, give us a scoreboard update. <laughs> it's a high scoring game doing? this <laughs> week. <laughs> mm. But I will remember. We've got Alyssa. Alyssa, Chester, Christina, Corey with three points apiece. Cal, Giannis, and Randall all have four points. And in first place with a perfect game is Brody Henderson with five points. I had a blue tongue last week. <laughs> How you feeling? Fine. Oh, did you yeah, have a popsicle? What is no, I had a uh, blue freezy. No, it wasn't from a mid. It was a it was a airhead, a blue raspberry airhead. <laughs> Question six. The topic is gear. Next live tour, Chester. That's your opener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this brand, which has a lantern in its logo, created the world's first portable gas-powered lantern in 1914. This brand, which has a lantern in its logo. Created the world's first portable gas powered lantern in 1914. Alyssa, you got this one? I think so. Alyssa, what are your kids getting for Christmas this year? Use the mic. It's okay if it's nothing. <laughs> cold. Drop <laughs> the hammer down. A lot of cold. Mm -hmm. They're boring this year. They're kind of really? like out of the toy phase. They okay. want to clothes and mm. um, a lot of meat eater shirts and hats. Maybe a little bit. First light of that. pants. Um, Alyssa's yeah. just been wrecking the free table upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hope you guys like Spartan. black black buffalo. And <laughs> a lot of black buffalo. Everybody's getting it. <laughs> <laughs> this brand, which has a lantern in its logo, created the world's first portable gas-powered lantern in 1914. Does everybody have an answer? Mm. Chester and Christine are thinking hard. Chester, you could just try cheating. Nah. Nah, okay. It's not my style. We're waiting on Chester and Christine. Man. What's wrong, Randall? I don't know. I'm just second guessing myself. Okay. I've lost, do, keep I've doing lost all confidence. Mm -hmm. Well, just maybe lay out all the lantern companies that you can think of. Mm -hmm. I know. I've been, I was thinking back on all the, uh, like the bush crafting and the, you know the Instagram accounts where they have the lanterns and mm. axes and so forth. Mm. You're not yep. familiar. I think that's a good way to think about it. Christine, <laughs> do you have an answer? <laughs> rucksack. Do, do, do you give up? My rucksack. Um, yes. <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Randall and Cal and Chester and Corey saying Coleman. Christine without an answer. Alyssa and Brody and Yanni saying Coleman. They got it. The correct answer. Is Coleman. 
The first lantern that W.C. Coleman created was able to light up a 100-foot circle. These lanterns were used to illuminate the first evening football game west of the Mississippi River. The company's other major invention was the original GI pocket stove, which was used by World War II soldiers. Question seven, the topic is cooking. This next great question comes to us via Adam Curry. The Spruce Eats defines this six-letter word as, quote, a French style of smooth, creamy soup that's made from crustaceans. The topic is cooking. The Spruce Eats defines this six-letter word as, quote, a French style of smooth, creamy soup that's made from crustaceans. Go for a bowl of this stuff right now. You got to stop doing these games over the lunch hour, mm-hmm. Spencer. It's the only time I can get everybody free. Brody seems to think he has this one right. <laughs> Next time, maybe order some lunch. Jeez. Randall. Yeah, no kidding. I'm still <laughs> laughing over the Black Buffalo Christmas at Alyssa's house. <laughs> <laughs> it's and the we gift a- that keeps on giving, <laughs> right? A solid nicotine addiction. We had a then, gift Then you'll exchange. know what to get him next year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Logs for everybody. <laughs> we had a gift exchange yesterday at Meat Eater, and somebody did bring b- Black Buffalo uh, to the gift exchange so that was a heck awesome. of a gift half of a trash can full to be exact <laughs> <laughs> it was only a small trash can so the oh. spruce eats defines this six letter word as a french style of smooth creamy soup that's made from crustaceans does everybody have an answer mm-hmm. is everybody familiar with the spruce eats no no I'm, that's what i'm just Wondering about if I've heard of it. If the flavor <clears throat> uh, flavor text will fill us in on the. <laughs> Is everybody ready? Well, it seems like a no. <laughs> I think we might be migrating away from flavor text. Get out your phone. <laughs> oh, Yanni, how'd you answer? What are we doing here? Everybody over there has already got one. We're good. Mm-hmm. Chester does right. not. Is everybody ready? Yanni's ready. Go ahead and reveal your answers. <gasps> we have Randall saying bisque. Cal saying bisque. Chester without an answer. Corey saying bisque. Christine saying bisque, Alyssa saying chowder, Brody and Is that Yanni. the red or the white? <laughs> Alyssa Yanni and Brody yeah, saying bisque. <laughs> Alyssa, you would have had to spell it chow da <laughs> to get that right. The correct answer was bisque. That's spelled B I S Q U E. The main difference between bisque and chowder is that bisque is smooth while chowder is chunky. If you want to learn how to make seafood stock that can be used in a bisque or chowder, then check out Danielle Pruitt's recipe on TheMeatEater.com called How to Make Fish Stock. Question 8. The topic is fishing. This reality show about commercial bluefin fishing has aired on National Geographic since 2012. Mm. Brody wrote his answer with the confidence of someone who is going to keep their perfect game going. This is question eight. The topic is fishing. This reality show about commercial bluefin fishing has aired on National Geographic since 2012. Brody, have you ever watched this show? Like way back. But I don't feel it's really about commercial bluefin fishing. I feel like it's about dudes getting in fights with each other. Randall? So like the flavor text <laughs> around the fishery. No, I don't. If I'm going to watch a reality show, it's going to be something like uh, Married at First Sight or <laughs> Love is Blind. There you go. The whole like. Something that all the dogs can Gruff characters on the high seas never really pulled me in. <laughs> is everybody? Uh, no, everyone is not ready. You watching, you watching The Golden Bachelor, Randall? No, no, I did watch I that. Oh, actually, did. Okay. I can't stand the the Bachelor. I don't want a contest. I want to see love actually oh. unfold. Yeah, it's the only Bachelor I've ever watched. Um, it was almost heartwarming, Phil. See those old folks finding love at that age. It's not too late. <laughs> it's not too late. That's right. They were in like their seventies. That's not. Wasn't that there old, some? Wasn't there some little weird about that guy? Yeah, he's on a reality the fact that he was on that show. <laughs> yeah, he dated twenty women at well, once. I thought he had, I, that I, is a little weird. I thought they had misrepresented his 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 relationship status that he actually had been. He had, you know, never mind. Yeah, it's never For having not seen this, watch it. You seem to know a lot about. Yeah, you it. got all the flavor texts around. Yeah, I think Golden I heard Bachelor. that on a, uh, one of my podcasts. Let's go back to the endless possibilities show. of love. <laughs> 
I liked it when you were Flava talking about of that. Love? Yeah, I'm yeah, really oh, digging yeah. in on the new season of uh, Love Married Flavor of Love. Phil, did you watch Flavor of Love? Uh, no. Randall? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. No one would get the pumpkin in uh, New York. So it was one of the greatest scenes in reality TV show history. Does everybody have an answer? <laughs> but moving on. Uh, I appreciate the extra cool. time. I needed Chester. Up until five seconds ago. Do you watch Chester, did you watch Winter House or Summer House? Answer. <laughs> I think. I'm not on my reality. Go ahead and reveal <laughs> your answers. Oh, oh. We have Randall saying Tuna Wars. Cal saying Wicked Tuna. Chester saying Big Tuna. Mm. Corey saying Big Tuna. Which was Jim Helpert's nickname in the office. Christine saying wicked tuna. Alyssa saying catch. Brody saying wicked tuna. Yanni saying tuna wars. The correct answer is wicked tuna. Brody keeps the perfect game going. You boys are confusing that with the show Whale Wars, which we've had a question about before. Never heard of Whale Wars. You have. I bet you were on that episode, Yanni. Thus, you have heard of it. <laughs> Wicked Tuna is You've still in production and has thus far created 12 seasons and 170 episodes. It follows fishermen who compete to make the most money by catching Atlantic bluefin tuna. It's estimated that the most valuable tuna ever caught on the show was worth upwards of $47,000. Phil, we have two questions left. Who is left in the game? Uh, the players who are not left... Are Chester, Alyssa, Corey, and Christine. We've got Randall and Giannis with six points. Mm. Cal with seven. And in first place, he's still got it. It's Brody with eight points. Question nine. The topic is biology. <laughs> so stoic over there with this fat lead. This next great question comes to us via John Vanek. Bring the heat, Spencer. What is the opposite of an ectothermic animal? What the... <laughs> Was that like, this question is too easy, Yanni? Or is it like, what does that even mean? Yeah, I think it's too easy. What is the opposite of an ectothermic animal? Is this the last test? question? This is Spencer. question we nine. Flavor it's just a question this. about prefixes. This is question nine. Well, why don't you just There's a little, tell the whole room, little Randall. hint from Randall. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they all can't be eights, buddy. What is the opposite of an ectothermic animal? Randall, you have this one right. I hope so. Cal, you otherwise have I'm this gonna one look like right? a fool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cal, you have Just this one right. Fool. I know the opposite of ectothermic. It's write that down. Ec but if I had to write down <laughs> the opposite of don't don't give throw out too many hints here. What is the opposite? Of an ectothermic animal, Brody. How do you Does feel about your answer? Scientific? I mean, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what which answer. There's you're a couple for, different but ways. I feel you pretty good. Because I could erase my. There is, but right? I like learned over and over again. That's if you read too far into any of these questions, you're wrong. What's the opposite of an animal? And then narrow in <laughs> with the ectothermic. <laughs> right. That's right. I find the corresponding yeah. uh, Instagram some, channel. Some non-carbon based life. <laughs> Think <form>. about that. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to meta me away from even having a correct answer here. Hey, <laughs> does everybody have an answer? Do we need more time? Because I have a question for you. Okay, about what? About your shirt. Oh, yeah, what, what, what do you want to know about what it? Is it? What's it all about? It's like a weird uh, looking shirt. It says Menno. <laughs> it says Menno, M-E-N-N-O. Uh, this was my baseball jersey in middle school. Oh. Uh, you still town, fit into it. The town I grew up in in Menno was Menno. Uh, Cal's made the observation before, but I used to be a little heftier, Yanni. And so, yes, my middle school baseball jersey still fits me. That's cool. Eh, actually, no, it's not that cool. No, I like the fact that you still have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was hoping you were representing the University of Montana Grizzlies, who are headed to the national championship. Against, uh, against South Dakota State Jackrabbits. Mm -hmm. Never heard of them. Is everybody ready? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Randall saying endothermic. Cal saying endothermic. <laughs> Corey. Chester saying endothermic. <laughs> Corey says nocturnal. Christine says endothermic. Alyssa says cold-blooded. Brody says endothermic or warm-blooded. Yanni says endothermic. The correct answer is endothermic or warm-blooded. The room mine. did well. Since y'all laughed at my answer, I had endothermic originally. And I thought that was too dumb. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, what I put down was endothermic, cold-blooded, and I erased cold-blooded. 
Okay. I had warm thing. blood you, in That it. is a good thing. Ectotherms are cold-blooded animals, yeah. meaning their body temp relies on external sources like sunlight or heated rocks. Endotherms are warm-blooded animals, meaning they maintain a constant body temp that's independent of their environment. Phil, we're on the last question. Give us one last leaderboard update. It is down to Ryan Callahan and Brody Henderson. Ah! Brody still has his perfect game with nine points, but Cal is nipping at his heels with eight. Now, Brody, I will uh, tell you, we haven't had a perfect game since the Christmas episode of 2022. It's been almost exactly a year. Mm. By the time this episode comes out, it will have been over a year. You could make some history here. Could. Question maybe you'll, maybe like you'll pitch me a soundball like you gave that, to Randall on the last question. That was the day one. that I played my first game of trivia. And I remember because really? Steve said, you should come play trivia with us. I just got a perfect <laughs> game, dude. I got a perfect <laughs> game. <laughs> now, we also had Randall at a perfect game once. He was nine for nine coming into the last question about uh, Wait, Big Wait, he's talking Horn. about this. And it's what happened a... <laughs> to Randall? He choked. It wasn't, a perfect, it wasn't a perfect game, so it's not relevant. I don't think we need to revisit this, Spencer. <laughs> question 10. The time topic is conservation. <laughs> Name four of the six states with wolverines, according to the Wolverine Foundation. Coincidentally, this is very similar to the question that Randall messed up on, which I think was related to uh, states that had, what, bighorn sheep? I don't remember. Them. He doesn't remember, which I don't think is true. Question 10 again. The topic it's is conservation. To me. Name four of the six states with wolverines according to the Wolverine Foundation. Brody was the quickest one to come up with an answer. His whiteboard is down. His marker is closed. He thinks he has the perfect game. Brody, you feel confident? I do. Okay. Four. You have four states written down, right? He's going to double check for us. He does. Oh, you should only do four. Four, only do four. You're going to get it wrong, Cal, if you have five or oh, fuck six. You. I'm going to do what six. If, if, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> is everybody? No, everyone is not ready. Cal's going to go for seven. Uh, you just tell us their whole native range, Cal. He's got him. He's got him. <laughs> okay. Randall's also confident. This is question 10. As a reminder, if Brody does have the perfect game, Meat Eater will double its donation from $500 to $1,000. Mm. A lot on the line here, Brody. Mm-hmm. Corey, waiting on you. Oh, I'm probably just erasing the right answer again. Okay. <laughs> Christine, you good? <laughs> Alyssa? No. I'm going to draw this out. Oh. Okay. I'm holding. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Randall saying Colorado, Montana, Idaho, Alaska. Cal saying Alaska, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Washington, Colorado. He went for six states. Chester saying Montana, Idaho, Alaska, Wyoming. Corey saying Alaska, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho. Christine crossed out Michigan, said Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, Alaska, Alyssa without an answer. Brody saying Alaska, Washington, Idaho, Montana. Giannis saying Alaska, Montana, California, Colorado. The six states are Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Oregon, and Alaska. Brody got it right. Or again. Mm. Brody with the perfect game, the first perfect game in about 13 months. Way to go, Brody. Well done. Thank you. Very Cal, impressive. Cal went with well, six so states and Colorado, he got it wrong. There's uh, Wyoming, or Colorado Wolverines have been cited in Colorado, but I don't think there's an established population. They're going to reintroduce this, them. This is via recognize. the Wolverine yeah. Foundation. You're going to have to argue with them. It's estimated that there are about 300 Wolverines currently living in the lower 48. Their range used to extend from New England to California, but was heavily segmented. The last reported sighting for a Wolverine in Minnesota was 1969. For California was 1922. For Utah was 1921, and for Colorado was 1919. Oh, bullshit. I, and you think I'm afraid to argue with somebody? Come on. <laughs> oh, go I'll ahead and argue, argue with, with the Wolverine, the Wolverine Oh, wait, Foundation. you're saying the last one in Colorado was seen in Colorado? It said the Wolverine Foundation said 1919. I thought they, I one thought just they wandered just, through that state a few years ago. They, like I thought they just tour. saw one like very recently. 
Brody, you're the winner with the perfect <laughs> game. You should give it to the Wolverine Where Foundation. Is your one, yeah, they, maybe they need yeah, some they obviously funding need some money to, to update, update to go website. find those Colorado Wolverines. <laughs> yeah. Apparently. Brody, where is the $1,000 donation uh, going to go? Oh, we'll do my favorite. He's Mule wearing a hat that says the Mule Deer yeah. Foundation. That's where you're going to donate to? Sure. What do they got going on right now? What do you like you about You know, they like uh, to take care deer. of those mule deer. Mm -hmm. Habitat, yeah. stuff like that. Second coolest deer in North America. Someone's got to love <laughs> According them. According to who? <laughs> Not me. Mm -hmm. Well done, Brody. Perfect nice. game. It's been a long time coming. Thank you. Uh, did, Randall, do you have nine? Who had nine? Did somebody have nine? Uh, nobody got nine. Mm. Oh, Cal was real close Cal to went nine. with the uh, Colorado instead of Oregon. Yeah. Lost he him. fumbled as he went to spike the football there. Good point. Mm. Well, it was a Pyrrhic victory. <laughs> Did that inspire you, Randall, seeing a perfect game by Brody? It. Un I'm completely unaffected. <laughs> okay. I'm completely I love that you're unaffected. Just, you're just taking it away even more. <laughs> I, you know, it's. I've moved on. Um, th there's other things in my life that I choose to prioritize over <laughs> winning perfect games. Reality the Golden TV, Bachelor. Yeah, yeah, finding love on reality television. <laughs> Join us next time for more Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. <laughs> <laughs>